What's up, everyone, and welcome to episode 268 of the Aussie Gamers Experience podcast. In the show this week, Lucas, get the beeper ready as we say, f*** you, to the nanny state. Ninja still causing a rise on Twitch, new streamer trolling the trolls, Microsoft's patent, Fortnite Brutes, Konami Mini, and the winners are, and much, much more. Editing Lucas, play the track, brother, let's go. This is the Aussie Gamers Experience Podcast, the show with barking dogs in the background, sneezing, (laughs) coughing, and all of those nice little things that remind you that this is not a paid production. Oh, (laughs) and in between all of that, there's some video game stuff too. Enjoy the show. Thank you for tuning into the show this week. Today is Monday, the 12th of August, 2019. I'm your host, Snoogs, and joining me for hosting duties is the one and only Greggio. Good evening, brother. How are you? I am well, and yourself? I am kicking along. Yeah, kind of sounding a bit buzzed, actually, now that I think think about how I just did that opening, and um, it could have something to do with the six coffees I've had, but... Yeah, well, to be fair, I've I've had some I've had some good days in the last. Well, it would be fortnight since the last time I was here because I missed last week's show, mainly because I just flown back in from downtown Coolangatta, which I'd spent last. Cooling, Cooley. Uh, so yeah, that that was good fun. So yeah, the weekend before last, I I um I got to spend some time with my 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 four brothers and my father it was my it's my dad's 70th birthday this year so we took him up to Cooley and we had a weekend away with the oh, f- six of weekend. us the boys weekend yeah and oh. it, it it erupted in all things as you can imagine you've met my brothers you know possibly yeah, what happened uh was there um, blood this time no blood this time oh, there was there was moments where it was close <laughs> uh, yep there was right. a few brothers almost took blood out of each other um, yeah, okay. mm-hmm. uh, so yeah, and then this this weekend just gone. I uh, I went to the Architects concert in Sydney, and they were oh yes, I did see by, post about that. Yeah, the um, supported by um, when she sleeps and Polaris. I'm a massive Polaris fan, and that was awesome. But Architects were crazy good. So lots of moshing, lots of head banging. And probably a little bit of a reason why my voice is a bit croakier, though it was already croaky to begin with because I was slowly losing it last week. Another reason why I wasn't um, probably up for the potty last week. So, nice. yes. We went, uh, we went snow hunting on the weekend. We were going to, um, and then, yeah, we didn't. <laughs> we We had a few things on Saturday and Sunday, so... I got home Friday afternoon, yep. looked at the map and looked at the weather, and it was it, it, it looks good. And there were some people at um, at Blackheath that said, you know, it was snowing up there, and there was some stuff around uh, a bit further up and around Lithgow. And Lithgow from my house is only hour hour and twenty. Yeah, it's, that. yeah, it's not it's, far. It's a pretty good run, and. Um, so we jumped in the car and, and went up for a bit of a cruise, sort of a bit of a, you know, a bit of spontaneity. And, um, yeah, my daughter doesn't really do spontaneity. <laughs> <laughs> so she had um, – we we went up there and she, she gets up my, – my eldest gets up very, very early in the morning. And yes. by the time she got home from school after a long week, she was rat shit and ended up getting to, to – lift. we got – we saw snow. Yep. We saw it snowing and there's a bit of ice on the ground and a, a little bit's just starting to settle, but nothing to play in. But the girls still got to stand there and feel the snow landing on them and whatnot, which was kind of cool. And uh, then on the way home, my eldest threw up on the side of the road from car sickness. So that was fantastic. Awesome. Yeah. Um, not doing that again anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> But enough about that. Uh, g'day in the chat to Radicus. Thank you very much for joining us, mate. I'm uh, I'm sure a few others will drop in as the evening goes along. All right, mate. 
let's jump into this week in gaming, shall we? Let's do it. I've got a game for this week in gaming. Yep. But I didn't put down what year it came out. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Maybe we can play the guessing game. Uh, well, it's a VR game, so I was reasonably new. It's called The Exorcist Le- Legion in VR, and it was released on Steam, and I believe it was 2017. Off the top of my head, I don't have the tab open anymore, so I can't go and double check it. But developed by Legion VR and published by Fun Train, it was released on this day on Steam, but it is also available on PS4 and Oculus. And a lot of people are probably thinking, so what? You know, why have you brought this game up? The Exorcist VR is a first person virtual reality experience of a horror movie performing an exorcist, an exorcism, sorry. So that's just, that's me sold. I was going to say, that's, that's, that's me out. Yeah. You're, you're gone. I know that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, yeah. No, it's not my jam. Yeah. <laughs> I, I could just imagine myself in VR going, the power of Christ compels you. <laughs> <laughs> and Tara uh, going, don't throw your beer around the house. <laughs> Would you knock that off? Stop throwing things through the wall. Yeah. <laughs> um, it is available on the PS4. Yep. I do have PS4 VR. Uh, have I bought it yet? No, because I'm a tight ass and it costs too much money. But as soon as it comes on sale, I will have it. I have a little alert. It's on my wish list. And a, when it all comes up that it's on sale, check. Thank you very much. I'll take it. Nice. So that's out. It's available over the joint. Uh, it looks like a lot of fun. It looks scary as shit. Uh, <laughs> just, just even watching the should um, be w- watching the the preview for it. Like out out of all the types of horror movies, ones involving like the first horror movie that I ever saw that was a, a horror horror movie that scared me was the original Exorcist. Yeah. So they still scare me to this day, and I'm talking. I probably first saw that about 30 years ago. Ugh, yeah. No, it's legit. It's legit scary still. Yeah, like, yeah. Not as scary as when it first came out, but it's there, – there, I love that movie. I, I, don't, I don't like horror movies, but I love that movie. Some of its practical effects oh. are amazing. Well, I'll tell you what, mate. Come around to my place. We'll crank the stereo up because there's nothing better than something standing behind you whispering. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah there is. Not having something behind you whispering. <laughs> it's brilliant. There's a, the big surround sound, you can hear it just whispering all around the house. It's fantastic. I'm, I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm good. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> According to Radicus, he hasn't tried Wipeout VR. He's too scared to. I haven't tried it either because the vomit comment. I've just, uh, I just haven't had the PlayStation on much this week, but it's on my list. I'll be. I'll do it for next week's show. Hmm. That should be a bit of fun. The, the vomit, the vomit comment, the vomit comment. I'll give it a crack. I'll make sure I get a few drinks into me beforehand as well. <laughs> Might even stream it with a video so people can see me falling over. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. Well, let's just jump into the show, shall we? Let's games, 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 games. That's what we talk about here, isn't it? Uh, I believe so. I believe so. Yeah. I've got two new games this week that I've been lucky enough to be given uh, review details for. Ooh. Mm. One's called Witch Hunt. It's on PC. Uh, another one where you're uh, you're hunting a witch. Uh, I don't know a lot about that one. It was offered to me as a, here you go, try this. Um, mm. So I'm going to be giving that a crack over the next week or so. And another one which I've played before. Uh, well, I've played one part of it before, I should say, and I was offered this this new section as well, which is Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden. Mm-hmm. Now, have you played Mutant Year Zero? Mm. I know that was on Game Pass before. Really? Yeah. No, I, I don't remember. I might, I might have it, but I don't know. I, I haven't yeah. played it. No, I haven't played it. It's um, it's different. It's. Uh, well, I should say, it's probably a lot of people probably listening to this going, it's awesome, it's brilliant. I've not heard a person say a bad thing about it, but they are always people that play these sorts of games. And it's a, a mixture between a stealth sort of game 
and a um, uh, turn-based combat. Yeah, right. And sort of like you know, you know the the South Park games where you've got a little grid and you, you you sort of pick your point on the grid and attack from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah something something similar to that. That's uh, that's just been released on PS4, Xbox, and Switch. <laughs> and it's very. Uh, it's kind of very similar to like XCOM. Yes. That's a very good thing. Very good one to put it up against. So I've got those two that I've been that I've got coming up. So I don't I don't have a lot to talk about on them at the moment because I haven't played them yet. Because this last week has just been hectic. But let's jump into something that we've both played a lot of. I've probably switched my brain off and played more of this than I should have. And that's, that's, that's easy mine- to do. That's Minecraft. Minecraft is coming back. Well, I should say it's never really left, really. No, but but its popularity you're right. is just, you're right. just going nuts at the moment. Yeah, because like more and more, every, I, I turn on my my Xbox now, and more and more people in my friends list are playing it every day. Mm. Like people that are like, I'm like, I didn't even know you played it, but they've obviously just started either picked it, picked it up and started playing it, or have re revitalizing their love for it. But yeah, there's like when I when I started playing it, like couple of months ago um there was very few people that played it on my list yeah but then all of a sudden just more and more and it probably doesn't help that i've added some people um <laughs> but i'm excluding those people i'm not silly uh there's people that haven't played it that are now playing more and more you're well, right i'm one of the i'm one of those people mm. that i've i've tried to play it in the pl- in the past never really got its claws into me i suppose hmm uh, now, obviously, we're playing on a realm, and we've got all of us in there, and we're all mm-hmm. having a bit of fun. And I, Kaz, Kaz and I, the other night, decided to go and try. <laughs> you and I played one night, mm-hmm. and you were showing me the basics of portal travel. Ah, oh, yes. When you go into the nether, you build a new portal, you go through yep. that one, and you end up in another part of the map. <clears throat> yep. So we were trying a very basic version of that because neither of us really knew what we were doing. And we were trying we were trying to find a, a jungle biome. Yep. Anyway, <laughs> we're, we're, we're going through the portals and it's like, nah, we're still in a, a desert portal. Okay, move another 100, 110, 150 paces or whatever. We'll try that one again. Nah, we're in a Sahara, like we're in a sand, a grasslands portal um, biome. Yep. Yeah, okay, let's try again. And then you'd walk through the portal and you'd walk into lava. Jesus, what are we doing? Yes. <laughs> Jump back up into it, <laughs> trying, to, trying to get back. And we get through that one. And then we'll go, go further and go again. And it was, uh, Kaz, why are we floating? And we were stupidly high mm-hmm. with nothing around us except for water. And I mean nothing, not even any little islands, nothing on the horizon, nothing. <laughs> but yes. water. Yes. <laughs> um, this this is the joy of portal jumping. Uh, yep. So I have two stories, um, both around. So I joined two realms this, this week. I, obviously, I joined the age one. But mm-hmm. there was the, the day that I tried to join, um, it wasn't working. It wasn't going to let me in. And REM has been in another realm with a guy that she met online um, and they invited me to join that realm. So I was like, well, you know, why not? I have a look. Anyway, uh, they've done a fair amount of realm jumping and they were trying to do some realm jumping to find a, a uh, essentially nine times out of 10, you do it for like creating resource areas. So you're not completely pillaging and destroying the area that you, you, you've set up a base in so it looks somewhat natural and you're not just stripping it of all resources and turning it into, you know, broken hill. Um, <laughs> yeah, yep. Uh, so you, you go somewhere else and you do it kind of like we do in, you know, South America. Anyway, um, so they they were doing this for REM and they they had the same problem. They, they hit water a couple of times in a row. Anyway, uh, I think it was like the second day I was playing, uh, Rem jumped on and she's like, I'll show you where a lot of the stuff is because I was still 
finding my feet in the realm and it's very well established realm at this point and she's like all right i'll show you where the some of the resources areas are anyway she's like i'll show you the jungle one because that's generally a very highly sought after one because it's got some pretty key resources in it that people really like like bamboo for instance cocoa beans Cocoa beans. No one wants cocoa beans. No, uh, but who, who knew that cocoa beans <laughs> were in Minecraft? Um, well, I, before I started playing, I didn't know. But <laughs> yeah, neither did I. I found them the other day. There's lots of things I found out that are in this game. Anyway, uh, so she took me um, through the the labyrinth of and um, Nether tunnels. Mm-hmm. We walked, I swear, for the better part of ten minutes through the nether to get to this portal. It was ridiculously far, right? Yep. In the nether. And when you, uh, for those who don't know, for I can't remember the exact calculation of what it is, but for like every block in the nether, you move uh, quite an exponential amount. I think it's one to eight. Yeah, uh, I could I'll be wrong. Yeah. I think it's one block to, you travel eight in the overworld, in the, the normal world, which is why you do it, do this portal jumping. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, we, there must have been, I must have walked a thousand odd bricks to get <laughs> to this portal. And um, I found that we finally got there and I got what I wanted from it and had to walk, walk my ass all the way back. And I was talking to the guy who owns the realm, and I mentioned that I'd, I'd been there, and he's like, yeah, because it's really funny, because he goes, I took my niece to, the, I was playing with my niece in the realm, and I took her to the this this particular portal, and uh, it was very early on, and we the tunnels weren't properly constructed, and it was quite narrow, like, there were single brick bridges, where you could easily die, and there was lots of ghasts and stuff like that around. Uh, and she, you know, she didn't feel easy about being in Nether and decided that she didn't want to go back through the Nether and decided she wanted to walk back, <laughs> in which he had to then lead her to make sure she went the right way. So he goes, there, yeah, you know, that was a good hour or so of walking, walking back to... <laughs> so, yeah, look, it's... It's it's an efficient way of doing it, but it's in the beginning when you're trying to find find particular biomes, especially uh, portal jumping has its um, let's say inherent dangers. Yeah, and especially when you're being uh, like the people doing the portal jumping are, are better classified as tweedle d and tweedle dumb. To be fair, I, I think <laughs> portal jumping with two people is 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 actually a really good strategy to have. You get one person that carries all the equipment to build portals, and then the other person just doesn't have anything on them. And usually, the person who has the lower levels, so they've got the the least to lose if something happens, goes wrong. And you just get them to go through the portal first. And if there's if they die, then they die, and they don't lose they don't lose their any equipment. And you can just tear down the portal and start again. You can just go, yeah, we're not going to need that. Um, so it's definitely the more efficient way of doing it and the safer way of doing it. But yeah, it's still when you're doing it by yourself. Yeah, it does have a few little hiccups. Hold your breath moments. <laughs> yeah, e- either way, it's uh, it, it was a good fun fun time actually running around with Kaz. Yeah, look, um, I, I look, I like both both the realms. There was one portal that we went to where we turned around, the portal was gone just demolished itself. Okay, that's weird. And we're like, uh, what's going on? <laughs> and I think that was one of the first ones where we were floating. So we're here on just this little island that it's made up in the air above water. Yep. And the portal's gone. Fun stuff. Fun, uh, fun. Mate, I've, I've jumped back into the vi- Division 2 this week. Yes. Did some more of the uh, assignments. Yeah. Can't see me farming them at all. <laughs> <laughs> no? No, like... No, like most of the assi- like most of the the story missions and and whatnot. When you when you go back and you farm it, and you you want to farm it for exotic bits or or if you're looking for a particular thing, they're they're fluid. There there are ways that you can work around getting them done quickly. But yeah, the assignments they're just painful. 
So for those who don't know, the assignments are at, uh, I believe it's Keneally College off the top of my head. I haven't written any of this down, but the college that you go to, you've got three different areas of the college. You go into, you know, one of the areas and then you've got an echo that's got three parts and you've got to investigate each part, which means that you go here, switch on A, which then starts a timer on B, which you've got to then stop and then go back to the echo to finish it off. And rinse and repeat three times over and then do it nine times in total for the whole thing. And I'm just glad I got the uh, the exotic first go through because I'm not doing it again. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's the story's nothing exciting. You you find um, little bits and pieces like uh, audio logs, uh, things like, well, pretty much just audio logs in this one. Hmm. Which give you a background story into what was happening at the college during the outbreak, and that bit of it's kind of cool, but you, you only find them once. So yep. once you found them, it's it's done. So is it just that it's tedious, or or is it's, te- it's tedious, it's slow, uh, and it's kind of boring. You know, like it's you go in, you do it with four, like with three other people. And like, I can go in with the with the clan and have a bit of a laugh with it, but mm. even none of them are even interested in it. And I don't have enough interest to push anyone to say, "Come on, let's go and do this." You know, I've done them all now. I've got the trophy for it. I've I've mm. got the exotic, and yeah, mind you, the exotic that I got. Oh, it's a it's a semi automatic rifle, mm. but it looks like a shotgun. Mm. It's only got five shots. It packs in, like my my assault rifle does. Uh, the base base damage of it is about eighteen thousand base yep. damage points, right? And yep. this rifle, so that's an that's a fully automatic assault rifle. This mm. semi automatic rifle, yes, you know it's designed for range and things like that, but it does a hundred thousand base points of da- base points of damage. That's with and that's with my assault rifle build. That's not even with a rifle build. Yeah. Right. So it's got an it packs a punch. It looks sick. It's I think it's called a Viper or something. And yep. it's got a snake wrapping around the uh around the barrel with the actual snake head as a separate part. So it's not actually the snake head itself is off the side of the barrel. Oh, okay. So it just it looks phenomenal. It looks fantastic on the wall. Let's just say that much. <laughs> <laughs> It, it looks awesome, and uh, I've I haven't used it in PvP yet because, uh, be frank, I don't play a lot of PvP. Uh, but <laughs> PvE it kicks ass. That's good fun. Yes. Sounds good. Yeah, that that part of it's good. Uh, and then I've had kind of a weird week where I've wanted to play it, and then I'll turn it on, and I'm like, uh, I can't be bothered. And you know, I just if I jump on there, then there's a good chance I'm going to be playing with other people and I don't really want to talk to them. And if it's people I didn't want, if I didn't know them, I didn't want to talk to anyone. So, yeah. Uh, The other two for me is the Blackout Club. I'm currently working through a review for that one. I was probably a little bit harsh on it on last week's uh, show. So I've played a bit more of it this week and my, my opinion has changed slightly. Uh, not so much on the general animation side of it, but the gameplay itself. Uh, there'll be more information coming up on that next week and in a review, which will be up shortly. And I'm also about halfway through the review for Wolfenstein Young Blood. And I have nothing but fun stuff to say about that one. So apart from the annoyance that the, the banter becomes, uh, yeah, that, it's good fun. Yeah. Uh, mate, the other one for you was... Car Mechanic. Car Mechanic Simulator 18. Yes. Right. Yeah, you have to say that because there have been two other games. This is the third game in the series, apparently. Uh, so Number 18 is the third num- game in the series. Yes. The first one was 14, the second one was 15, and the third one was 18. Clear as mud, eh? Hmm. All right. Clear as greasy. Yeah. And it's had a very... So it's had a bit of a staggered release as well. So it came out on PC in the middle of uh, 
2017 and also on on ios on there's a mobile version of the game which i've been playing for i don't know six to 12 months now i've been playing that and i i really enjoyed it as a mobile game because uh, it's it's quite different it has it's very similar but the 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 this and the mechanics of it and i've talked about it before um on the show the, the mobile version so this this isn't a mobile version so this isn't the mobile version. This is mm. I've got the the Xbox version, which is oh, a lot okay. more in depth and uh yeah, look, so I'll go through it. Right. Um so it's it's a first person sim. Mm-hmm. Uh you obviously play as a mechanic. Uh there's a couple of different modes you can play. So there's a story mode and there's there's a normal mode and a hard mode and then there's a sandbox mode. Uh, so sandbox mode, no, I'll go to story mode. Story mode essentially is you play as a mechanic, obviously. Uh, you get given, you got people bring their cars to you and with problems, you fix them and you make money and experience doing that. Uh, you then use that, you use the XP to upgrade your skills, uh, your perks and your workshop. So you get big workshop, more hoists, more stuff to do. Uh, you can then do more re- different types of repairs and stuff like that. And the dollars you can move on to obviously taking on bigger jobs because you obviously got to have the money to pay for the parts so you can repair it so people can pay you. Mm-hmm. Or you can then also move on to doing other things like um, restoration jobs, like finding barn finds or junkyard cars and fixing them up and then selling them or modifying new cars. Uh, sandbox mode removes the whole doing jobs thing. It just gives you an unlimited amount of money, maximum experience. Um, you unlock. It doesn't unlock everything for you. You still have to go through and unlock um, the things with the experience. Like it gives you all the points you could possibly need, but it also means you can tailor your sandbox experience to either just being a basic workshop or full blown. Um, all 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 bells and whistles kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, the some of the things are quite detailed. So the engine work is 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 ridiculous. Um, speaking as a person that was a mechanic once upon a time in my in my life, the actual engine work is is cool. Like you pull the engine out with an engine hoist, put it on an engine stand, and you can strip the thing down to the block and build it back up. And I mean. Everything, spark plugs, push rods, alternate, alternators, power steering pumps, chains. It seems like something I played way cranks. back in the day. It is. It's it's very similar to think of this as the more advanced version of street rod, especially when it comes to the yes. engine building. Yeah, but you, right. could, you could yeah you could do a lot of that. Yeah, it's just a more in depth version of street rod now. So the same with the chassis work. Chassis work is is also quite detailed. The bodywork and the interior work is less detailed. I mean, you still have to repair them, but it's a, a much more minimalistic part of the game. Uh, once you've done that, you can then you can test. There's a bunch of test beds you can test your car, so you can do brake testing, suspension testing, dyno testing. You can also then take them to, like, there's an off-road track, a racetrack, and a bend and airstrip, and you can do all sorts of driving around in the car while you do that. Uh as I said before, there's different places you can get cars from. Mm. Uh, there's a junkyard, and you literally walk around the junkyard, look at the cars, pick one, send it back, and repair it. Same yeah, with nice. barn finds. They're usually in a little bit better condition than the junkyards, but they're also a little bit more expensive. And then you can also go to a dealer and buy a brand new car, which you can then do up, put performance parts in, and and um, and sell. That's the nuts and bolts of the game. This is this is where it starts to come undone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I started playing this game and I opted to do the tutorial. Mm-hmm. Let's say it's less of a tutorial and more of a... As tutorials go, it's like getting a blind person in a room and just saying, all right, I'm going to tell you about all the stuff that's in the room. But first, you have to walk around and find it. And whatever you bump into or find, I'll tell you about it. 
That's essentially the style of tutorial is this. Okay. Yep. So yep. if you, if I you if, I understand that analogy perfectly. <laughs> so if you don't find it, you don't learn about it, right? Okay. Yep. Or uh, actually, it's more that I got actually got frustrated with it because I couldn't find any more things to do, but it wouldn't let me out of it. Like it just would it. It doesn't let you out of the tutorial until you find everything, but it doesn't sort of mm. point to it and go, "Hey, check this out." Right. So. I actually quit out of the tutorial. I then came across my second annoyance. Actually, before I even left the tutorial, I, I noticed my second annoyance. So I play with my controls inverted. It was already it was set to normal. Uh, so I went to settings, and lo and behold, there is nothing in settings except for quit the game, save the game, load the game. I'm like, those aren't settings. Yeah, that's right. So you can't you can't change it to inverted. So I got the dirt and I quit out of the game and went into the settings in the main menu of the game, which is where you can change all this stuff. So you actually have to change this stuff before you get in the game. You can't change it on the fly. Mm-hmm. Right? So annoying. It's it's not completely you know, breaks the game not, for me. Not completely game breaking, but it's a, no, it's a frustration. Yeah. But it's annoying because I changed it. I went back into the game and then realized that the sound levels were just annoying me because the music's way too loud in this game. And I was like, great. I now have to quit out of the game again. And the, the thing that really starts to grate on you is the load times are quite long in this game. So once again, I had to quit out, wait for it to load. Ch- adjust the adjust the sound. By this time, I'd learned my lesson. I went through all the settings, made sure they were, you know, happy with everything, where everything sat, and then went back into the game. It was a. It was actually the first time I went back into the game after I changed the inverted. I realized a new feature that I found annoying about this game. So it will only allow you to have one save, one save game. That's it. Right. Okay, which would be fine, except it treats each different mode of the game as an individual save. So you can okay. only play one mode of the game at a time, and if you want to switch modes, you lose the other game. Hmm. All right. So Sounds like fun. So this is where I was like, I played story mode for about two jobs, and I was like. Uh, I'm just going to play sandbox mode because just see what it can do. Yeah, just so I can just so I can try everything. Otherwise, I'll be here forever trying to get a sense of this game. Uh, and I'm not sure I want to go back now because I'm just like, why would I? Except for the challenge of doing it, um, I, I'm I'm like happy building cars with an infinite money source. I can just do everything I want essentially. Uh, so the, how it looks, the game looks really good for in some ways but in other ways it's not right kind of a bit like the whole i won't i'll I'll use this very loosely kind of you know like when we did rage and i said some things about this game look really beautiful and then other parts of it you just go why didn't you yeah why why is that look so old kind of thing yeah yep yep this this game would look amazing if it was about 10 years old (laughs) but the detail but the detail in the game is amazing like i know i know what i'm looking at when i look at like i can build up an entire like i can build up a hemi right and it looks yeah. like hemi and down to the the smallest details that and that's where they've really put their focus is the details if you're a car person this has got the details that you'll really like kind of thing awesome uh the car yeah. physics when you go to drive them they're, they're old hat as well. They, it feels <laughs> you complete you completely like disconnected from. Yep. Yeah, you completely disconnected from the car. Uh, so look, keep in mind when I say this, it's it's fifty dollars on release. So it gives you an idea of it's 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 not a it's not a triple A rated game. It's it is. Yeah, it, but I've got to admit, I. <sighs> The way that you're describing it yep. and the way that you've spoken about it, the number that popped into my head was 30. Yeah. Yeah, look, I'm, I, I was going to say I feel 
like 50 was a little steep, to be yeah. honest. I, I, I like if I had now, I bought it with a gift card. Someone gave me, I bought it using um, money people, someone gave me for, for the Xbox store. So there's a part of me that was like, kind of glad I did that. Because if I had <laughs> paid with my own $50, I'd probably be a little bit more upset than what I am. Uh, so it's definitely one if it's on sale and you're a car person and you wanna and you want something that just you want to play with, you know, you, and you can tune the car, you can do all sorts of weird, wonderful. Like I made a a thousand horsepower El Camino, like last night, just mucking around. And look, that's, it, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Look, it's it's amazing. It's and and it and it goes like a thousand horsepower Camaro uh, uh, El Camino should when it's got leaf spring rear end. Ah. Uh, it, it it goes straight, and if you touch the steering in any way, it, it feels like it's going to roll over. Uh, while I say the physics are disconnected, that's the reality of that car would be, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. So, you had a straight line and hold on for, for dear life. Yeah, yeah. Just don't touch the steering wheel at all. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, look. Look, now I've gotten into sandbox mode, and now I understand its quirks, and I've, and I don't have to screw around with the quirks anymore. Uh, the only bugbear that continues to haunt it is the long load times, uh, and and the fact that I'm still learning the game because the the, the tutorial was terrible. Like I tried to put suspension, in, I like I tried to put shock absorbers in my car last night, and it just refused to let me. And like yeah. it wasn't until Rem came out and I was explaining it to her, and I was sort of in the process of explaining it to her, I had this kind of epiphany. And and she was sort of asking the question, maybe there's there's obviously something else you need to do before you can put it in there. And I had the epiphany when I looked, I pulled the suspension off another car and looked at it, and it came up the same way as some other things come up, like the engine and the wheels and tires, they come as a group, they're not individual items. And mm-hmm. so I was like, ah, I've, I've got to find somewhere to put it together. And, and as, soon as, as soon as that sort of lightning bolt came, uh, it didn't take me very long to work out what to do, but it was just when it just doesn't give you any clue as to why there's a problem. It just says you have no parts. I like, oh, literally have parts. Why, why won't you let me put it together? It's things like that that can annoy you. But like I said, if it's on sale, I think it's, I think it's worth 30 bucks. It's worth playing for 30 bucks. Um, 50 is, yeah. you'd want to, you'd want, you'd want to be hardcore. About the game, yeah, you'd you'd want to be getting stuck into it. Yep. All righty. Well, uh, <laughs> Radicus, Radicus enjoyed your chat. Uh, <laughs> Radicus has just reminded us as well: the PS Plus and Xbox games with gold are now available. So make sure you jump on and try them out. Uh, Radicus is having a bit of fun with Sniper Four, Sniper Elite Four, I should say, mm. which is on the PlayStation the PS Plus. Uh, mate, let's jump into some news, shall we? Let's do it. All right. Uh, in the news this week, you have to excuse me for a moment while I get my soapbox out. Right. I've said this before, and I will say it again. The archaic classification system in Australia is utter bullshit. <laughs> And needs to be changed. Again. <laughs> I was, I've said it again. It's a joke. It's just ridiculous. This nanny state idea that we have that they think that they're protecting people because we have to sugarcoat the idiots. No. We, we've just got to stop this. We are a laughing joke. We are, we are a joke on a worldwide scale because of this. And I have proof to back that up that we are a joke because the amount of places that put articles out going, ha, 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 we're playing this game that's rated for teens and Australia has banned it again. The latest coming through is that Day Z has been banned in Australia. Now, it's been banned for a reason which is everyone knows about. Every developer knows that if you put this in your game, in Australia, it will be banned, and that is illicit or prescribed drug use relating to incentives or rewards. So 
if you have to use a drug to have a positive effect, banned. Okay. You know what? I don't have too much of a problem with that. I have a problem with it being a flat-out banning. If you want to make it a nanny state, make the game an R18 and actually crack down on people selling it to underage people, you know? Hmm. But the fact that we just flat-out banned Daisy for this, there is one little part that just brings this whole shit show together. DayZ was originally given an MA15 rating in Australia when it was a digital-only download. It and then went to an RC rating, which is refused classification, once it went to actually be put into physical stores, so uh, having, a, having a physical version of it. So the original, uh, which is a separate rating system, which is used, it's an automated system, and it's the IARC process, which unfortunately... I don't have. I've spoken about it previously, but uh, that's a that's a process where uh, the developers go in, they put the information in about the game, and they fill out a questionnaire. Essentially, essentially, yeah, yeah, and, and then it dictates a rating. A rating goes from there. So that's used the world over. That's the, not that specific one, but that style is used yep. the world over. And I've spoken with indie developers in the US, in Europe that all, you know, we've, we've seen games that have been reasonably cool and approached these people about them saying, hey, you know, we do a podcast in Australia, we do streaming, we do reviews, blah, 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 blah. You know, can you, you know, can you tell us a bit about this game? And they'll write back and go, look, we're not releasing it in Australia because it's just too hard. This IARC process was brought in to change that. So originally it was given this MA15 rating. It has now come back because... There's weed in it, pretty much. <laughs> now, what it is is there is throughout the world, throughout the Daisy world, you can collect a marijuana plant or a cannabis plant, however you want to talk about it. In your inventory, it comes up as a little weed symbol, the seven-leaf flower, and when you use it, it's got healing properties, which anyone that's ever smoked weed know it just makes you hungry and see weird shit. That's on there. So because because you can heal from it, that's the incentive. That's where the problem is. Where this little caveat is that, that causes this whole issue, it doesn't exist yet. It does not exist in the game. So the cannabis is a plant. That's, so it's a plant crop, which is found in DayZ, that was found in the files of 0.58 experimental version. It has not yet been added to the game and it is not yet known what its functions will be. Just let that sink in for a sec. So it's in the files of the game, but it's not It's not used. It's not there. It's not, not shown yet. But because it's in there, in the base coding of the game or the base files that someone's shown this information for, that's what's caused it to be done. What do you think of that? All right. So I have a few things about this whole process. Uh, I'll, I'll try and be brief. So firstly... What I find, the first thing I find insane is for digital sales, the developers fill out a survey and they get an automatically generated rating system. Yes. As soon as you take that exact same game and try and sell it on a shelf, it gets refused classification because it has to go through a completely different set of hoops, even though it's the exact same game. Mm -hmm. So that's the first insane moment. Second insane moment is... Um, I believe that, yes, while the weed is an issue, uh, there's also the issue that they use morphine as well in the game. Well, I haven't seen anything about the morphine. All right. So, look, I haven't played DayZ, so I can't say for a certain. This is just what I've read in the last little while. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe I believe there's already, and correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, there's already, um, a, a, they already use morphine in the game as a, a health, so a stim bag. Essentially, it's the same trap that there's a fair few games that have already fallen for. Um, oh, well, Fallout, 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 Fallout 3 Fallout, was... Fallout 3 was one of them, me. and State yeah. of Decay as well. And um, anyway, so so that, and like, I'm like, I get, I get the whole cannabis thing. I, I, I understand that that's an issue, but like morphine is an actual drug that's used to, as a painkiller. Mm -hmm. So if that's essentially what is being 
shown as in the game. I don't see the difference. Now, I get there's a, especially in the US, there's, and I was only watching about something about it today, there's a, there's a cry, um, opioid, opioid crisis. Essentially, people are dying from the overuse of opioids. Opioids. Mm-hmm. And look, on, on that stage, I can say, yeah, okay, maybe maybe you should be careful about how you how you how you market those things but like we're not talking like yeah it's yeah there, i think there's a there's a there should be a different difference between a prescribed drug and a and a legal drug um which you know could all change in the manner of a you know any political climate probably not in this country anytime soon but anyway and then the last the last thing is is the coding now I'm going to play devil's advocate here. While I can see your point, yes, it shouldn't be. It's not in the game. It's not used in the game. And why should it be rated that as such? That that is a good argument to have. Uh, at the same time, the fact that it's in the coding of the game that means that what are the checks and balances in place for once they receive classification, them not in twelve months' time, say, release a, a, a an update. Or a DLC that unlocks those things, and essentially, and and like they don't, I, as far as I know, they don't have to get revised classification for updates. Nope. So, but like, that's that's irrelevant because anybody could do that. Anyone could introduce something at a later date, or change the name of a stim pack, or you know, change change anything to be without that around like to be outside of that classification that was originally done. But the the thing is, and and Radicus has brought it up in the chat as well, we fought long and hard for an R rating for video games in Australia. Agreed. Our our neighbours have it. Our international community has it. And now we have an R rating, R18 plus rating. So you need to be an adult to purchase this. Yes. Anyone who's selling it should be asking for identification. And yes. if you have a junior there with you, then their their job as a, as a seller, as, as someone providing this service, needs to make sure that you understand what you're purchasing. Yes. So we have this R18 thing there, but we don't use it. No. And, you know, and, and, and to be fair, like I said, like I said n- to you, none of these things would be an issue if you're selling them to an adult. Mm-hmm. Because an adult knows that, you know, that just because just because the game says that these things are good for you doesn't mean it is. Like it's, you know, no, I, I, no, no, no one that was a level of intelligence would use weed as a health bonus because you'd be sitting in the corner giggling to yourself and get eaten by a fucking zombie. It's yes, just not going to work. But flip side, this right, yep. and you take a look at Fortnite. Okay, mm-hmm. Fortnite is this massive money-making machine, a worldwide phenomenon. When Fortnite kicked off, there was a lot of little things that caused grief that people who were just morons were doing. Yep. You know, and that was drinking certain things that looked the same as the armor potion for Fortnite which is a fluoro blue, so take with it as you will, is what you wanted people were thinking that they should drink that because that was on the game. <laughs> you know, this Tide Pod challenge that people were doing, that started around the same time. Whether it's got anything to do with Fortnite, I don't know, but it was a thing around the same time. There's people do stupid shit out there all the time. Yes. That is not brought on by a video game. And it's definitely not brought on by something that DayZ has played the world over. It is an MA rated game. Anyone that's younger, and because let's face it, it's not Call of Duty. It is actually quite a, a tough survival game. Yes, it's not going to be a lot of younger of the younger generation playing it anyway. I just think that once again, Australia has they've overstepped. They've they've put this whole you know wrap everyone up in a big woolly jumper, make sure it's all right, make sure no one gets hurt or no one says anything bad to you. And oh, oh no! They said a drug. No, drugs are bad. We can't do that. Like, Come on. We sure, surely by now we've moved past it. Well, I, to be fair, no, we haven't. Because even outside the gaming 
sphere, our, our drug culture is one of, you know, suppress and restrict and, you know, we're very, we're very anti-drug in this country. Yeah. This is true. Like, and, you know, um, I don't have much to say about it outside of it, but yeah, yeah. I'm just saying it, it ties into it because the people that are making decisions about things like pill testing are the people that are making decisions about this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is true. But at the end of the day, I think we need to just we need to sit back, we need to take a look at, at really what we're trying to focus on and look at a better way of dealing with it. Uh, I, look, I this, agree. This agree. refusing classification... In this day and age, okay, I'm not going to buy it from an Australian retailer. Yeah, okay. There's nothing stopping me buying it from someone in the US. Yep. There's nothing stopping me giving my Australian dollars to someone overseas to purchase this. Yep. You know? And I've got the ability to purchase it on Xbox. I've got the ability to purchase it on PlayStation. Yep. You know, I can I can get it from, from the US, from Canada, from Europe. Mm. It's... Am I going to? I'll be honest. No, DayZ doesn't interest me. Yes. But it's I, I can. And if I can, believe me, anybody can. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah, look, it, it, that's look it. the the insanity of the whole thing is, and I'm going to sum this up quite simply so anyone can understand it. Essentially what we're doing is we have an R18 classification that we don't use. Essentially what we're saying is, well, just in case – Liquor stores sell sell beer to kids. Let's take the alcohol out of the beer. That's essentially what they're doing. I say let's use the R18 classification and let's educate people properly. Yeah. But as soon as you say that you need to re-educate someone, oh, Jesus. It just It's too hard. Too hard. Forget about it. It's too hard. Oh, we have to enforce it? No, that's too hard too. Uh, let's until just that. Let's just ban it. And, and to be fair, it, the... Part of that problem is how video games are perceived as a whole. Like the reason that we have laws that you know prosecute people from selling alcohol to minors, cigarette to minors, um, and other media content that is R rated or above to minors, and the reason it's enforced and it's carried out is because those things are deemed as adult things. Video games are still not deemed as adult things; they're still seen as Toys for kids. This is true. I am a big kid, I suppose. Well, yeah, look, we are, but I'm a, that's I'm the point. We're, we're big. We're big kids. We're adults. Yep. We're adults that are enjoying a pastime that is suited to an adult exactly. age. But people don't see that. They just look at it and go, that's for kids, right? All right. Well, let's leave that one there because otherwise we'll be going at it all night. Let's have something a bit of fun. Sure. All right. Trolling the trolls. Love trolling the now, trolls. Everyone loves everyone loves trolling the trolls. And I, I'm not talking about the trolls that have a bit of fun. Like everyone's referred to me as a troll at some stage or another. And that's because I'm a happy nuisance. Let's call it that. <laughs> <laughs> I I can be a nuisance, but it's always in good fun. Of course, when, when we talk about trolling the trolls, we're talking about those people out there on the internet that just take it just that little bit too far. Or even just well too far, they're they're past the line. So there is a Twitch streamer by the name of Paladin Amber from Adelaide, and she has. I don't know if you've ever seen anything that she's done. I've I've watched a few of her little clips and whatnot. She has a very unique way of dealing with trolls or sweaties or you know just the scum of the internet, really. <laughs> Those, those people that we've all heard about and, you know, being that I'm a bloke pushing 40, I don't encounter that because, well, I'm not a, a woman in my early 20s, uh, which which Paladin is. What she does, so she's recently grown, and this is literally over a matter of weeks. She's grown from having an audience of 2,500. She's now got over 44,000 followers on Twitch, 94,000 over, 94, over on Twitter, Millions and millions of views racking up on YouTube, and it's all because of what she does. Now, someone will come into her stream and, you know, say something filthy in the chat. Okay, we've all seen bits and pieces of people doing that, 
what she will actually do is she'll stop what she's playing, change the scene so it'll look like she's sitting in a newsroom and will come up with a mock, you know? So someone's jumped into her stream and gone and she's asked, you know, or this person's asked for her sexual orientation, which if you went into a shop and did that, <laughs> you'd more than likely get belted, right? Yeah. Yeah. You'd, at, at the minimum, you'd be told to leave. Yep. So what she does, so she'll, she'll change the scene, the background scene that she's on, and will come up like she's in a newsstand and go, breaking news, this just in. It is possible for people on the internet to not want to do the horizontal tang tango with one another or with any of you. Back to you guys. And just do this absolute pure Aussie piss take. Yep. I love it. It is yep. hysterical to watch. And the fact that, it has been a long time since I've seen something that Australian on Twitch. It's just when when I when I first saw it and I had a look at it, and then this this bit of information came up, and I thought I'm go I'm going to have to run with this because it's a brilliant idea. And when you think of this Aussie sense of humour, this is exactly what it is. It is mm -hmm. not sitting quietly and just you know ignoring. It is no, you've come here, you've had a dig. Guess what? I'm having one back, and I'm going to have fun with it. So I think brilliant, good honour. Would you agree? Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah. Look, I, I, I'm the same. I, I saw it, and I thought, yeah, that's that's cool. It's it's about time. I, I just don't I don't understand the mentality. I, know, I, I don't get how brain dead you have to be to walk into something and say this, and to be fair, as much as you might watch them on a daily basis, they're still a stranger to you. Yeah. Like, and what you're doing is, like, it's it would be implied to ask a friend, let alone a stranger. Um, you know, so I just, yeah, I just, ugh, just give it, give them hell. Yes. So <laughs> she's got, she's I'm, got my support. Yeah. Good, good on it. I'm going to put some details. Uh, I'm going to try and put them up over the next few days. So hopefully check on our website. There'll be some, some information for her because, like I said, Brilliant, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna ring the bell and make sure that uh, people know about about her Radicus. Her name is Paladin Amber, and yeah, so she's over on Twitch, and that's where she and YouTube. Obviously, M you've got to watch it. That's the easiest way to do it. It's just it's just funny. It's a nice little quick a, a nice quick piss take, and it's just done extremely well. Uh, Greg Steam. Steam. Steam Workshop. Steam Workshop. I saw something little on this in regards to CSGO. Yes. Yes. Well, that's, that's what this is about, kind of. Oh, okay. All right. So Steam Workshop, not not the one from Thomas and Tank Engine, but the one that we play games and oh, yep. is used by content creators to create content for games, has now created a, a moderation approval process for content that has been created, uh, what they what creators have to do is they uh, they they'll make something obviously on the Steam Workshop. They'll then apply uh, for approval. They'll get a verification email back from Steam, and then a moderator will then approve their content before it can be released to the public for download. Mm -hmm. They say it should take less than a day for this to happen, so it shouldn't take too long. You do it, you. Best case scenario, same day. Worst case scenario, the next day. Uh, older stuff that is on there at the moment, uh, everyone that has it will be able to continue using it uh, until it's been um, updated. Uh, and if it passes, you get to keep playing it, I guess. And if not, then cry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sit in the corner and cry. While Steam of uh, Valve, sorry, hasn't uh, put out anything official about why this is now happening, uh, essentially the majority, the, the 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 popular theory is that, uh, especially in CS:GO, uh, a lot a lot of the content that was being put out was by um, like fake accounts or they were being used to spam advertising. 
Uh, there's even so much uh, people were accusing uh, these these accounts of using bots to boost their numbers up and to mm-hmm. also drop numbers of popular content so they would stay on top, um, essentially advertising anything from free stuff on from from other places or, you know, I'm sure it gets worse than that. Anyway, uh, the, the the three games that are affected by this are Dota 2, Team Fortress 2, and CSGO. So far, no other games are affected by this at the moment. But obviously, now it's in place. If this becomes a problem in other games, it, it's obviously transferable across. So, yeah, that's that's what's happening in that space. It's getting a mixed reaction from the content creators. You know, some uh, got the dirt, you know, because they're, you know, that it's it, it's going to take, they have to do more work, obviously, by applying mm-hmm. and takes more time for their stuff to get out. Uh, and I think some of them might be just a bit nervous that, that then they don't, don't know who's moderating it. So they're not sure how strict the rules are going to be on what content gets passed and whatnot, because they said there's nothing official from Valve to stipulate where the lines are. So, but it's, it's uh, as far as I know, it's already been put in place and people are already having to go through this process. So the fact that they haven't put out an official thing, you know, that's, that's, I can understand why people might be nervous about it. Other people, obviously, especially people that are trying to get content out there, and are getting squashed by these fake accounts. Obviously, they're going to be happy about this. So, yeah. Cool. Well, mate, you can keep going with uh, the Fortnite Brute. Sure. So, Season 10 of Fortnite saw the addition of Brutes to the maps, which are like these big sort of mech suits, as far as I know. I haven't yes, played it. they are. <laughs> they are, and uh, very much mixed. Mixed feelings on, yes, on their uses, yeah, yeah. So a lot of a lot of people feel as though it's kind of breaking the game, and it it easily, it too easily throws balance game balance out. Uh, to the point where a lot of people are saying just take them out of the game. Mm-hmm. Well, Epic have come back and uh, they've decided that they're not going to take them away, but they they decide to throttle their spawn rate. So here's the the maths of it all. So originally in the beginning, there was a 100% chance that anywhere up to four brutes would spawn on a map. That's now throttled back to uh, 21.5% of anywhere up to three spawning. Wow. Yeah, it's a big... The the first big jump. There's a big jump there. Um, So when Storm 1 happens... Uh, it used to be the same, 100% with up to four. That's been throttled back to 44% uh, up to four. Uh, Storm 2 is it used to be 100% of up to three. It's now 40% of up to two. Storm 3 used to be 66% of two. It's now 40% of two. Uh, Storm 4 was 50% of one. It's now 10% of one, and the last one it used to be 10% of one. It's now down to 3% of one. Okay. Um, so it seems looking at the maths, what they've done is, so the first three rounds, essentially, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a chance. It was a certainty there was going to be mm. brutes on the map. And then it very slowly dropped away, like, but it had a very sharp drop at the end. Like, it was... Was slow, 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 and then the last round it was just like poof, kind of tapered off really sharply. Yeah, like good luck. Yeah, but now it seems that the beginning it's less likely you'll find one, and then in the it, it like sort of sustains the sort of chance for longer through the game. It tapers off a little bit more shallowly. So anyway, that that's that's the maths of it. They said they're going to monitor it over the next couple of weeks and see what the effect is and, you know, make adjustments if needed, obviously. So so yeah, those yeah. The, those that don't like them, look, there's less chance you'll see them, but for those that like them, they're not going. There are ways. Oh, you know what? I haven't played Fortnite in God knows how long. Every time I start it, 
It just takes so long to load in. I'd get bored and turn it off before it gets to the start screen. Uh, at the very beginning of the show, mm-hmm. I, I had a little quip. I said, Ninja is still causing a rise on Twitch. Mm. So as we all know by now, and anyone that's listening along, Ninja has gone across over to Mixer to exclusively stream. Now, he, for whatever reason, you can say, you know, he wanted to get back to the roots of streaming and it was kind of like a new fresh start. Good on him. He's going really well. With him moving from Twitch, Twitch was obviously a little bit upset. <coughs> let's say. They, they tried to um, still profit from him. And what they were doing was ge- generally if you go to a um, – uh, a channel that's offline, you'll just get an offline message unless they're, you know, hosting somebody else. And that's just sort of the general thing. You'll either get the host channel or a message just saying, you know, someone's offline. What they were doing on Ninja's platform or Ninja's Twitch channel was they were promoting other streamers and, you know, hey, you've come here looking for Ninja, but you might like so-and-so. And this was a new thing that Twitch were apparently starting up. It's backfired. It's backfired in a big way. On Ninja's Twitch channel, there was porn playing. <laughs> <laughs> so what's happened? His channel's just sitting there dormant. Emmett Shear, the CEO of Twitch, has apologized to Ninja. It's they don't know how it got there. They don't know where it came from. At the end of the day, everyone's talking about Twitch, so who knows? But they've since turned off these uh recommendations so it's not something that's going going along it's just now these aren't happening anymore until we figured out how this content ended up streaming exclusively onto ninja's page i don't know anything about the content i don't know what it was i don't know where it came from all i thought was hey it's funny ninja's come out and apologized and said look sorry to anyone that's been there he's now trying to get his page and his content and everything removed from Twitch. That was kind of like he was he was happy to just walk away and let it be and leave all his um, his content on there and whatnot. But it looks like he's removing all his videos, his previous streams, all that sort of stuff because that stays in there for a little while. Uh, plus all your clips and everything that people take. He's looks like he's getting rid of everything off there now. That was kind of like the final straw. So uh, I've just found a, a a link to the image, and oh, yep, yeah, that that's porn. I just I find it amusing that a company like Twitch turns around and says, mm-hmm. uh, "Yeah, sorry, we don't know where it came from. We don't know how it got there." Like that's pretty just, much your job. That just quietly, there was fourteen thousand people watching it at the time, and it's not subtle. It's it's full on. Like I'm I'm just seeing a screenshot. Of you know Ninja's channel, yeah, and it's got you know the streamer you're looking for is in another castle. Check out these popular live channels, and top left hand corner, it's something that's written in I'm assuming Russian, <laughs> and let's just leave it at that. All right, uh, mate. Let's. What else you got? This details on the Konami Mini. Yeah, the. Turbo Graphics 16 Mini. So literally, uh, I've got I've got like a list of games because they announced um, a few more games on it. Like the look, I'm not going to lie. There's there's now 57 games on this this thing. So is this what like a like the PlayStation Mini? Yeah, yeah. Look, I don't I don't know what the Turbo Graphics 16 was, but apparently there's a mini version of it now. So cool. Uh, look. So it's broken up into there's 25 English language games and 32 Japanese language games. Mm-hmm. Some of them like so uh, the English ones that you might know are like Bomberman 93 and Splatterhouse. Yep. And some of the Japanese ones are like Galaga 88, Spriggan Mark 2, and Dragon Spirit. There's a full list. I put a full list up on the Facebook page just before we started tonight. So if mm-hmm. you're interested. There's a full list of all 57 games. Uh, it's going to be $99, and it's an Amazon exclusive, so you only be able to get it from Amazon. That's that's the kind like of idea that we can now say Amazon exclusive and still get it in Australia. Yes, I like that now. Yes. 
All righty, so, mate. Well, two more from me. Sorry, what, when's it coming out? I should have asked. Uh, I didn't. I didn't catch that. I didn't. We don't. I didn't know, we don't know that yet. I, I, I don't know. So yeah. all right, beauty, mate. Okay, I've got a couple more. Uh, mm. Trine four. Did you play any of the Trine series? Trine. Yeah. No. 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 Okay. Well, Trine four. The Nightmare Prince has got a release date of October the eighth. Oh, huh, okay. So that's the the main reason I bring it out is I've been covering some stuff on Trine. Uh, and so many people that have played the old ones are telling me that I've got to give it a go. Uh, try and four if you buy the uh, like the special edition, you get all the the other three included with it. So that's coming out on PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch on the eighth of October. And there's a new video, the the release details. Check it out; it's on the website, and there'll be some info in there in regards to it too. Uh, mate, the last thing from me before we get into your little special bit of detail mm. is Microsoft. So there's been some talk this week that Microsoft and Samsung have been in a bit of a collaboration. Now, Microsoft have patented, pat, patent, 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 patent. Yeah, that one. That'll do. That'll do. They've they've done that for a new style of controller to connect to your smartphone. Mm-hmm. So picture your Xbox controller, right? Mm-hmm. Take off the handles. So you've got so you don't have the long bits coming out. You've only got the top part of like the, the plate the face plate. Yeah. Now cut that in the guts. So you've got the one like the, the D pad and one controller on one side and the face buttons and the other controller on the other side. Yeah. Plug it into the ends of your phone. Okay. So what it's designed to do is your phone's going to act as a screen. So on a sideways, it's got a piece that sits on the back which powers the whole thing. The two ends connect to it so it sort of like sits in a cradle. Yep. And that's your controller. It all connects to the phone. It's got um, headphone jack wireless headphone connectivity, uh, Bluetooth, obviously, and uh, options for it to be powered too. So you can plug it in if it's getting low on power. Oh, okay. So there's, the, I don't have a lot of information. I've got a picture for it. Yep. Uh, but that is kind of about it at the moment. Yeah, right. Yeah. So it's very, very, very early on, very, um, very limited information a few people have got have made 3d mock-ups of it and believe it to work and all that sort of jazz but it looks like it's going to be a part of uh, i think is it x x cloud yeah yep yeah i dare say it's it'd be something to do with that no yeah, for sure so paint a design whether it becomes a reality or not you know they've probably just got all these different designs out there this is one that's that someone's found as they've been looking for things and whatnot, so good on them. Yeah. Um, Mate, over to you. We've Mm -hmm. got uh, something a bit different coming out this week. Yeah, so, you know, I I was was looking looking for things to talk about tonight and I I was looking at the the new releases for this week and I went, you know what, I'm just going to do something different. So I ran my finger down the list. And just picked picked one at random. I went, I'm going to have a look at this. Obviously, I can't play it because it's not out yet, but uh, I'll have a look. I'll do some digging, have a look, and see what it is, and I'll give you my opinions of, let's call it window shopping. This is, the, this is like window shopping. All right. So the game that I came across is called Exception. Uh, it's going to be released on the 13th of August, which is tomorrow. Yeah, Tuesday, so it'll be out by the time you guys are hearing this. Uh, it will be available on everything, so Xbox, PS, Switch, and PC. It is a 2.5D side-scroller by Trax Master Software. Uh, essentially, it's set in inside a computer, and your little character is fighting a virus. And essentially, it's a side-scrolling platformer, and as you play through, you'll pick up things and it rotates the environment. So it changes the map from what were once 
platforms that you walked along and now walls that you can parkour up kind of thing. Uh, there's over 100 levels to play. It looks, it has a very sort of laserish look. All the all the surfaces you run on along kind of look like lasers. And then there's obviously all these, I won't say obviously, it's obvious because I've watched the, the trailer, but uh, there's lasers and stuff floating around that can zap you and kill you and stuff like that. It looks like a game that's kind of been built to try and speed run. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, look, it's, I, I don't know how much it's going to cost. Uh, I didn't, I didn't see any price on it, but, uh, it, it looks interesting. I would, I would at least have a look and see what it's worth and consider yeah. picking it up because it, it looks, it looks like a bit of fun, especially if you like those sort of side scrolling, fast paced platformer, jump, 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 jump kind of games. So, okay. so what's, what's it called again? Exception. Exception, and you found that on Xbox. I'm assuming. Uh, well, I was. Oh, it's on everything. Just, well, it's on everything, so you can yeah. find if whatever you play on, it'll be there. Essentially, all right, sweet. That's it. It is. It is. Look at that, eh? Well, let's wrap the show up, shall we? Let's. Radicus, mate, thank you for for hanging around and and joining in with us. Uh, I've got a bit of a last word for this week. Yes. I'm going to PAX. You are. I am. I, I got a an email last week that I I wasn't uh, I wasn't expecting to be honest with you, and it's confirmed that I've been accepted uh, as part of the uh, the media contingent to go down to PAX this year. Mm-hmm. So I'm heading there in October. I'm taking well, my my wife Tara is coming with me. Yay! And. I, I did say to her, I was like, well, are you going to come to the show with me? You know, do you want me to get you a ticket? And she's, no. <laughs> she's, got, she's She's got no interest in games, gaming, or anything pop culture, really. So it's not her scene. I thought maybe just one day. I was like, come on, you'll, you know, come and see what it's like. You, you yeah. might find something that you enjoy. And she's like, no, nah, I'll just go there. I'll, you know, have a couple of wines, go shopping during the day. And, you know, we can go out to dinner and whatnot of a night. Like, yeah, right, fair enough. We can do something like that. Should be a bit of fun. So, yeah, uh, anyone that's listening, if you're a Melbourneian and you know of any sort of places to stay, please let me know because I've got no idea. I've never stayed in Melbourne itself before. Uh, I know a bit around the outsides but not in it. And also, if you're heading to PAX, let us know. Might have to catch up for a beer. Might do a bit of a Aussie gamers experience catch up because uh, I already know there's a few other uh, groups that are going down which have already started looking at doing catch ups and whatnot. So I think that'll be pretty cool if we can set something up like that. So let us know. Touch base. Of course, some other last words. We've got Aussie Gamers TV and Snooger Vision over on Twitch. Make sure you jump in and say good day to us uh, and. Instagram, Greggio XBL. That's me. That's you for all the sexy bits and pieces. Mm. Uh, any other last words from yourself, mate? Uh, I don't think so. I, it's been no. pretty quiet, you know, just doing my Good thing. Stuff. All righty. Well, let's, let's close up the show anyway. Thank you very much to everyone that has listened to the show and especially those that are still listening this far along. A super special thanks to our live listeners, as I said, Radicus and Kaz. It's always great to have you guys in here, Gredge. Thanks, mate. No, my pleasure. Hope you, hope you had fun. Always. Always. Lucas, enjoy the editing, mate, as I'm sure you will. To all of our listeners, feel free to continue any of the topics we've discussed on this show, on our Facebook page or Discord channel. I want to hear your thoughts on the classification problem. Please tell me. I know <laughs> I'm not alone, but I, I want to make sure there's more with us. To get in touch with us directly, you can shoot us an email at info at the hxp.com. And, of course, while you're out there on the interwebs, don't forget to hit our whole website, www.thexp.com. Links, as always, are in the podcast show notes and descriptions, wherever they may be. That's all from me. Good evening, good afternoon, good night. As always, I am Snooks. And I have been Greggio. And we will see you next time. Bye. Sure. Mm-hmm.
Righto, that's the end of the show. Does anybody listen to the show this far along? I don't know. But if you do, join our exclusive Discord club known as the Agents of Age. Just join our Discord channel using the link in the show description and comment the phrase, I came here to party, and you will gain Agent of Age status. Subscribe to this podcast using the links to the things in the show description notes. And if you are listening, know this, we love you. See you next time on the official podcast of the Aussie Gamers Experience.